from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube at the VTUG Winter Warmer 2019 at Gillette Stadium, home of the New England Patriots, AFC champions. Week out from going to Super Bowl 53. Uh, joining me is a user from the great state of Maine, Donna Pease, who is the Director of Computing Infrastructure and Services for the state of Maine. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. All right, so Donna, you've been to a few VTUGs, of course, the, the Summerfest, which is, you know, it, it might not be quite as big as the winter one, but is known even broader. I've known people come from out of the country because there's a giant lobster bake at the end of the day. Uh, I've been a few times, uh, but, uh, you know, tell us, you, you've been to VTUGs before. Yeah. We have. Um, so uh, I have been to many, um, especially in Maine, and this is probably our fourth or fifth one that I've brought in the team uh, from the state of Maine here. Um, and I feel it's really crucial and important because it allows them to network, uh, to talk with their peers, and to look at the technologies of how we can um, provide services for the constituents of the state of Maine and for our services that we offer within our office. Yeah, so we always love talking to the users. Uh, we love to be able to help you share with your peers what you've been learning. And actually, <coughs> I, I've had lots of great government discussions uh, over the last few years. Uh, even attended, uh, I attended a public sector show in the cloud space uh, last year. And it's always fascinating mm. because people have a misconception when it comes to what it's like to be IT in government. So let's dig into that a little bit. Tell us a little bit about uh, your role, your group, what's kind of under your purview. Sure. Um, I've been in state government going on 33 years as a public servant. Very uh, proud of that. Um, I have a great group and uh, I am the Director of Computing Infrastructure uh, Services and it's really um, directory services, Microsoft Stack. Um, we have a uh, uh, VMware environment that we've been uh, probably nine years uh, now and uh, we're just implementing um, SimpliVity, our hyperconverged. Um, and after extensive uh, research on that, we really um, solidified and selected HP SimpliVity because in state government, we had a lot of um, uh, aging servers uh, that needed to be replaced, um, as well as our VM environment, which was 44 nodes. And it was a huge investment. So not only on the licensing, hardware, storage, uh, the compute part as well. So looking at the hyperconverged, um, that was just one of uh, many of our technologies yeah. uh, that we looked so, at. So Donna, t take us back. How long ago did you start looking at that initiative? Oh, 18 months. Okay, uh, and, 18 and months. Just, was it a single location, multiple locations? Can you give us any as to how many you know servers or VMs or locations uh, that, that this uh, solution was going to span? Um, for me, it was actually uh, spanning and taking on many of our uh, on-prem solutions that we have, our, uh, like our SQL environment, yep. um, our application hosting, uh, the one-offs we're uh, bringing into that, uh, as well as upgrading our existing VM cluster. So it's really taken on and morphed even more. We have a lot of net new ass that uh, want to uh, participate in this environment. Um, so. For us, it is it is literally um, like a cloud solution, but it's for within our own um, private cloud yep. uh, solution on that. And, and these were critical business productivity applications that you're talking about. Not, Absolutely, this wasn't a new project to do. Uh, you know, early days of uh, hyperconverged, it was like, oh, I'm doing desktop virtualization. Mm -hmm. Let me roll this out. I mean, you know, you're, you're talking about databases and applications. Absolutely. And so we run uh, close to a little over 600 uh, servers uh, for uh, virtual and physical. So when all uh, when all said and done within our hyperconverged, our uh, goal is to really be uh, under 60 physicals left within state government. Um, and currently today we have uh, probably over 400 in our virtual environment today. So we're really expanding that more and bringing the services all into one, knowing that we're uh, going to have compute network and everything in our storage um, will all be in this environment. Plus we have a, a legacy uh, storage environment. So when you're thinking of your legacy storage environment and you're looking at your refreshment of hardware, uh, and all the licenses around that, our return on investment was huge for the state of Maine. So it was um, literally uh, the wise choice for us to do within state government um, 
for taxpayers, saving money, also for the state on that as a whole. Yeah, I, I have to imagine, in addition to kind of the CapEx piece, if you're saying going from 900 to 400 and looking to get down to 60, operationally, uh, hopefully it makes the jobs of you know you and your team a little bit easier uh, one, once things are up and running. And that's the one of the promises of hyperconverged is it should be that cloud layer. It should be almost mm. invisible uh, when you talk about it. It's just a, 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 a pool that my virtualization lives on, but I, I, I don't need to touch and rack and stack stuff the way that I might have in the past. Exactly, exactly. Good point on that. Um, also on that, we've really taken a, a broad look at how we can leverage the cloud. So um, from a disaster recovery aspect, um, and uh, not only having the site resilience between two data centers, but how we can leverage the cloud uh, for that uh, continuity aspect, so we're really um, broadening that and uh, the team's doing a, a fabulous, excellent job at that. Are, are you doing the Cloud DR today or is that a future plan? That is future. Okay, great. And, are you going to leverage a public cloud as that? Are you, are you far government. enough down the a, a So we, we have Azure today okay. uh, and we have a government tenant on that, so right. we, will use, um, we will use that uh, that aspect yep. uh, within the government tenant as great. well. So Primarily Microsoft applications. You've moved into hyperconverge, and you're leveraged the, the Azure, you know, government certified uh, cloud pieces. Correct. Okay. Awesome. When when you started going down this path, did you have in your mind hyperconverged, or is is that how did how did you end up on that type of solution? So no, um, we didn't. Um, doing the research on that and looking at all options, um, and really doing the the, the research with that. Hyperconverged was more of making sense um, from the return on investment and also from a, uh, s uh, I want to say the simplified fashion, like you said, it's simple, you want to make it uh, not so complex. Uh, it provided uh, everything uh, within that environment. Um, and it was really based on how we were structured today the investment that we would need to do if we didn't go down this uh, path um, and take it in. So we, we did go with the hyperconverged. Yeah. Uh, in your previous environment, were you using HPE for the servers or the storage, or? Uh, so we were HP. We are an HPE shop, yeah. um, and uh, we have EMC. We have uh, uh, pure storage. We have you know different aspects of our uh, uh, storage today that exist. So uh, looking at that as well, we had a, an investment that we either needed to upgrade, replace, and and or uh, invest. Yeah. Oh, oh, what I was poking at a little bit is, you know, were you HPE before? It, was that part of the decision to buy SimpliVity, which is uh, part part of the <coughs> HPE family, or was that not a major factor? Uh, it was not a major factor. Yeah. I mean, we were we we have always been an HPE shop. However, we uh, had criteria we were looking at, so. Um, you know, after doing the research, and we had 15, um, f we were looking at 15 uh, vendors at the time, we narrowed it down to like eight, and out of that we really narrowed it down to two um, that were in the quadrant, uh, in the Gartner quadrant. And it, in, in doing our own research and study and uh, bringing all the vendors in and everything and what we had already invested, um, what we currently had, it really came out to SimpliVity as the choice. All right, and you're 18 months into this, you've got some cloud uh, DR in the future. H how are things going? What have you learned so far? Is there anything you would have done differently or any advice you'd give to your peers uh, if, if they're starting to go down this path? Um, do the research. Um, do the research. Be very thorough in what you're looking at uh, for your requirements. And, um, and you know, not only the research, but look at what you've already invested in, um, and take that into consideration, uh, and in what your return on investment, what you're looking for your return on investment, because you need to look just past not only your hosting environment, but it really goes into, um, can your network uh, support uh, that environment? Do you need to upgrade your network, um, your storage aspects, licensing aspects of that as well. So it's a huge investment. However, look at the money that you're already paying. Yeah, uh, it, licensing, one of those things, uh, when you talk about that great reduction of servers, 
are you today or do you expect in the future some of those licensing costs from either the, the database, the virtualization, will, will those actually be able to be scaled down? Absolutely, yeah. and that was part of our ROI as well, yeah. um, uh, by a lot. Um, you know, and that's, that is one of the benefits of the hyperconverge as well. Once you set that up and uh, purchase the proper licenses, I mean like data center licenses, you can put in, in as many VMs as you need uh, within that environment, and that's important. So you're really just looking at your compute at that, you know, what you need for storage and compute. Yeah, I'm curious, just Poe, because we, we have, we've worked with clients for years on that, and oftentimes I've got a, you know, an ELA or I've got a multi-year contract there and I have to renegotiate it. Has that gone smoothly? Have there been any bumps along the road or is, is it pretty straightforward that, you know, licensing can be a huge chunk of your budget and like, oh great, um, I'm two years later and uh, I'm going to save myself a lot of money. So, I, I actually um, am the administrator of our enterprise agreement with Microsoft, have been for many years, so I know what we have, um, and so I work very closely with, uh, with that, and, and I, as far as the licensing and what we have. So for the renewals, um, I will say it gets easier. Um, I found that being consolidated, because when, when the agencies owned their IT at the time. We had many enterprise agreements and that was more complex. So if you can actually consolidate and go into one, um, we have one enterprise agreement uh, or you know, under the three, I would say, it's much more manageable on that. So um, I don't find that that's, that's a, uh, a showstopper. Um, on that, it's gotten easier over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Simplified, it's it, it, more simplified. It, it, it's great to hear that, and actually, you know, Microsoft has made great strides. Microsoft today is not the Microsoft of five years ago or ten Correct. years ago. I would agree. So, Donna Pease, pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing uh, yeah. your experiences, and uh, be sure to check out thecube.net for all the recordings from the VTUG Winter Warmer mm -hmm. 2019, as well as all of the other shows. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching the Cube.